The holidays start here at Kroger with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Kroger has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Choose from a great selection of digital coupons and use them up to five times in one transaction. Check our app for details. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content which may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. All right, y'all. We are going back to our roots with a Midwest 2020 mini tour. Oh, oh, I can't wait. Thank goodness. Corn-fed entertainment. Tater tot hot dish. Mm, Hot dish 2020. We are going to be in Indianapolis on March 18th, Chicago on the 19th, and the Twin Cities, a.k.a. Minneapolis, St. Paul. Ever heard of it? On Saturday, March 21st. Got some more dates. Amanda, what else do we have? From there, we're going to be going to St. Louis on March 23rd and Kansas City, Missouri, Trump, (laughs) on March 24th. Tickets can be found at our website, wineandcrimepodcast.com. So keep your eye out, get those trigger fingers ready, Mm -hmm. and buy them before they sell out, baby. Yes, please. We can't wait to see you all. See you in March. You are listening to Wine and Crime, the podcast that nearly killed me this week. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan Minnesotan accents. Oh, yeah, sure, you bet. I'm Kenyon. I'm Lucy. I'm Amanda. (laughs) And, and I'm, I'm sore today. Can I tell you why? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Your log shoot ride okay. in more ways than one. No, not even. <laughs> that log shoot. Did you oh, my get God. Some? Your I, log I didn't get shoot some. ride. Everybody calm down. Everybody calm the fuck down. <laughs> I went on the log flume at the Mall of America yesterday. <laughs> I'd be sore, too. And screamed a lot, which is why my voice is a little strained today, because even though toddlers ride this ride (laughs) effortlessly, I fucking lose it (laughs) as a 31-year-old woman. (laughs) Then uh, we went to, there's a rooftop hot tub at a hotel here in Minneapolis that's open all year, and it's fucking awesome, and you can get like a night pass for it. Totally walking out to the hot tub, slipped on ice, because, you know, it's water. (laughs) Oh, no. On a roof and went w- all the way, like fully crashing to the ground. My cocktail <laughs> flew everywhere. Everyone, and there's like 40 people in this hot tub, and they all saw me. Honey, the worst yeah. is when people yep. start to crowd around you and go, Are you okay? It, that <laughs> didn't happen that you. much because most of the people in the hot tub were A, way too cold to get out, and B, too drunk to care. So it was kind of great. Mm, Perfect then. And then there were these like three women drinking Moscato, and they were like, let us give you some free wine because you spilled your cocktail everywhere. And then this other woman was like, it flew into my mouth. And I was like, you're welcome. (laughs) So I don't have a bruise on my ass, but I'm a little sore today from flumin' and fallin'. (laughs) Flumin' and flumin'. Yeah. Dating is hard, you guys. <laughs> extreme oh dating. My Actually, God. we will get yeah. to extreme dating. <laughs> this is like extreme dating. Oh, yeah. It goes oh my with God. the theme of this Too many episode. physical tasks. Yeah. Your yeah. anecdote at the top of the show is going to pair perfectly with a piece of my section. You're welcome. Well, Kenyon, what are we talking about today? Yeah. The topic, this is a very special fan pick uh, oh. picked by... Ashling Marr, who's a very helpfully sent a name pronunciation guide. Love it. Um, and the theme is seduced to kill. Mm. Hashtag goals. Yeah. So like people <laughs> that get enticed to murder in order to please a lover. I mm. mean, 
Or if you are like me and intentionally misunderstood the assignment, Mm -hmm. enticed someone as a siren would, which we'll get to it, Mm -hmm. into a murderous trap. Well, let's get to it. Amanda, what is our wine crime pairing for Seduced to Kill? This episode is paired with Estate Carolyn's Saconet Vineyard Siren Vidal Blanc 2014 of Rhode Island, USA. My. Oh, that my. That is a mouthful. You're How's welcome. How's the mouth feel for that Thick. mouthful? Oh. <laughs> oh. Just, I will read the back of this bottle because their little notes are fucking amazing. But just to give everybody a rundown on what Vidal Blanc <laughs> is, it is a hybrid white grape varietal. Um, it is a combination of a Trebbiano Toscano and Vitis Vinifera. I've Ooh. definitely never heard of either of those. Doi. But uh, <clears throat> why it makes so much sense that this is a wine coming out of Rhode Island is that this was specifically like created, developed to be winter hardy that manages oh. to produce high sugar levels in cold climates with moderate to high acidity. Mm. So a Minnesota wine. Yeah. You can definitely find, I think there are uh, Minnesota wines that do Vidal Blanc, uh, Canada. There's a huge growing area for Vidal Blanc in Ontario, Canada. Mm. Like these babies are hardy, but they definitely produce a sweet product. Mm-hmm. So if you like Moscato's or, more desserty wines with a little bit of like minerality and acidity to balance them out. This is a great selection for you. If like you're a, a middle-aged woman in a hot tub in Minneapolis, yeah, trying hi, to help me. Amanda. And Lucy, I'm going to call you out for saying like a Riesling because a true Riesling or Gewurz demeanor should be dry and not sweet. Okay. We've been over this. I rarely you clearly listen were to not your wine paying notes, attention. So. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> Congrats. I also tune them out and have had many a sweet Riesling. I love it. Well, they're delicious. But this uh, tends to be fruity, aroma, aero, uh, aroma notes of grapefruit, pineapple, high acidity and sugar potential. So, again, it's particularly suited to sweeter dessert wines. Mm. Let's see what Carolyn's wine notes have to say on the back of this bottle. Mm. <clears throat> on the front of which there is a beautiful portrayal of a mermaid, the siren. Yes. Mer- with like man. the long, mer- it's merman. <laughs> with like the long mer- hair covering pox. her perky nipples. <laughs> anyway, okay, a seductive <laughs> song that draws you closer with the promise of bliss. The siren's voice is irresistible. Mm. Welcome her powers into your life and use your own charms to their fullest. Let our vineyard's most popular wine tantalize your senses and leave you washed in delight. Ooh, wet, <laughs> with summery with notes, delight. this blend sings on the palate. Its citrusy flavors burst with aromatic <laughs> energy, harmonizing with a range of foods. Accurate. Boobs? Foods, <laughs> but also boobs. I mean, mermaid. This pairs well with boobs. <laughs> Can confirm. Third love. Harmonizes yeah. with a range of boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Clam Enjoy with seafood, boobs. chicken, cream sauces, <laughs> and salads. Oh my god, this is the second wine that we've had in like the last couple of weeks that suggests but like, chicken on the yeah, label. Or cream sauce. <laughs> Pairs well with ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Cheesy oh <my> pastas. <laughs> And also, thank you so much for sending us this wine. It was very generous of you, and I'm really sorry that I'm kind of being an asshole about it. <laughs> but it, it is my job. I'm picturing a, a Starbucks cup with the mermaid logo on Ooh, the front. Ooh, kind of, but, like, more sexy. Mm. Oh. All right. All right. Is it a so this is a or a popper? This is a popper, and Ooh. if you don't have one already, you should head over to our online store, wineandcrimepodcast.bigcartel.com, and pick up one of our nice pop wine keys, because mm-hmm. they are amazing devices for opening bottles of wine, which sounds shocking that a wine key would be great for opening wine, but my <laughs> God, it is. Um, are we ready to pop? Let's do it. Ready. Okay, here we go. The goose is loose. 
It's coming, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, ready, ready, like, ready, 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 ready. <laughs> Cotty, Cotty, Cotty. Ready. Cotty, Cotty. Ooh! Ooh. Ooh. Little, little yeah, reverb worth on it. that pop. Worth, worth the wait. The wait. <laughs> <bitch>. Nice. <laughs> All right. So nice. Oh, well, the aroma really just tumbles out of the bottle. <laughs> Really as slaps you in the, the face. Room. <laughs> Just a dick slap of aroma to the face. <laughs> dick slap. <laughs> oh my god. Oh wow. Speaking of seduction, <laughs> it's right, a facial of, of aroma. <laughs> Lucy, what is our background in psych for seduced <laughs> to kill? Okay. Woof. Well, a little part of me was dreading researching, like, the science and biology behind seduction, so I didn't fucking do that. Okay. <laughs> That's the beauty little... of working for yourself. Mm -hmm. Do it how you want to fucking do it. I went a little mm -hmm. bit different route this week. Love and it. I want to share with you some seduction tips from two of the nation's leading consumer magazines. Oh, thank God. Mm. I need these. One... Bring it on. One is oriented to the male sex and the other to female. So let Cosmo. This is more, what? Cosmo. Oh, we God. got Cosmo and, and we got Maxim. Oh, nice. good. The so, two of the most like patriarchal magazines we could possibly <laughs> pull from. I love for real. It. So actually, my segment is more or less a social commentary. <laughs> so I encourage all of your comments. Mm-hmm. Okay. To so we're Derek gonna start out at Wine and Crime Podcast at oh, gmail.com. I was Let's just not filter all of these directly back to was, Alan's inbox. I was just talking about Everything to you gets two. forwarded to Alan. Just you two. Just you two. I love it. Okay. So this is according to Maxim.com. This is a list of how many we got here? Eight tips to seducing presumably mm -hmm. women, because it's fucking Maxim. Yeah, These okay. are directed mm -hmm. to men. Okay, number one, ditch the pickup lines. Spouting okay. a, are you from Nashville? Because you're the only 10 I see, isn't going oh. to get you very far with a beautiful woman because she knows better. Or Actually, she's an introvert and she's flustered and she didn't pay attention to what you were saying, so she doesn't get the terrible <laughs> joke in the moment. I love it, and that would work on me. Or she'll 100%. say, oh, I'm from Minnesota. Yeah. And then <laughs> exactly. Actually, we're 15. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see a picture of my cat? <laughs> <laughs> Nearly 90% of the women in this study, so this is alleging that there was a study done. <laughs> right. <laughs> alleging. <laughs> graded these half-baked pickup lines as really, really ineffective. Cue the sad trombone. Okay, so mm -hmm. there's something that wah, you shouldn't do. <laughs> Instead, be straightforward. About 65% of women said the direct approach would do it for them. A simple, hi, I've never been here before. What's good on the menu should be sufficient, although that That's would not send me to the door. Hi, like, want me to eat your ass? Don't fucking talk to me. Just don't just don't ever talk to me. <laughs> yes, but also a difficult strategy for seduction. I guess. Not talking to anyone. <laughs> Instead of desperate, you'll seem relaxed and confident. Like James Bond. Women oh totally dig relaxed and confident. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay, I guess. Yep. All right, number two, let your freak flag fly, which is really oh, difficult Lord. to say. I've been practicing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boring is bad. Science says so. Everyone says so. Wow, this article's bad. It's so Science bad. says so. Talking about the weather instead of sharing something genuine about yourself makes you magically morph into a generic, emotionally unavailable humdrum fuckboy right before her <laughs> very eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that is I amazing. Mean, it's generous to Sold. say that you transformed into that, but yes. <laughs> You've <laughs> exposed yourself mm -hmm. to be a reader of Maxim. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, talk about how you practice speaking in foreign accents for absolutely no reason. It's kind of weird, and weird is attractive, but like not that specific example. Okay. <laughs> That sounds but horrible. Like, also, you already have to have a foot in the door because if you just walk up to a woman and are like, 
I like practicing <laughs> Hello, foreign governor. accents. <laughs> Key to practice our safety for connection. <laughs> You know oh what? That might God. work. That might work with the three of us. It might work with me too. Uh, <laughs> All right, we're number three. So easily seduced. <laughs> number three. Watch your body language. Psychologists have found that it takes somewhere between 1.5 to four minutes to decide if you have the hots for someone or not. I'm okay. assuming based on their I see body it. language. Jeff Goldblum, under 10 seconds. <laughs> oh I my love Lord. Jeff Goldblum and I cannot <laughs> explain why. Yeah. There's no real reason. Hubba hubba. Except I did love the fly, the one that he was in, the fly. Oh, when he's so like half good. fly, half Jeff Goldblum. Oh, we mm-hmm. remember. Mm-hmm. It's like the pity kill. Oh my God, so good. Mm. Okay, number four, leave some stubble. Facial hair is badass. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. (laughs) Women think heavy stubble is hot AF because it's like non-verbally saying you're a strong, masculine man. There are so many typos in this article. I'm not even... I like a soft, doughy crier. (laughs) Dad bod. (laughs) But I do like stubble, so... A soft, (laughs) paunchy crier. (laughs) Uh, Portly men only. (laughs) In more sciencey terms, women are biologically wired to find some beard action sexually appealing because it indicates healthy androgen levels, which translates to good sexual function. But to clarify, hey. chops, a full beard, or a creepy porn stash are not attractive. Mm-hmm. So stick to a nice five o'clock shadow. And dear God, if you are like a Michael Sarah type body, oh, no. don't oh. try. Don't don't, don't <laughs> stay push in it. your house. Just stay kidding, in your no. lane. <laughs> stay <laughs> in your facial hair lane. <laughs> like mm. oh we're so mean. <laughs> I mean, we're but helping like accurate, people. Though. Okay. Beyond middle school, that's like not a thing that should be. Or like take a trip somewhere and give it some time to grow out. You know, it's like after you get <laughs> go into surgery. hiding until your beard grows in. <laughs> well, like after you get a nose job, you can't go out in public for like a couple weeks. I mean, says right. you. I, I mean, mean, unless you have a deviated septum or like sinus problems, or if you're yeah, Jax. like Jax did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dummy. All right, number Lucy five. Buy her dinner. This is a mating custom that predates dinosaurs because it speaks to women on an evolutionary level. Taking okay, how li- could it predate dinosaurs if restaurants didn't exist? <laughs> or oh. humans. Listen to this. Oh, that too. Listen to this. <laughs> Taking a lady out to dinner or courtship feeding, as it's called in the science Blech. world. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Shows women that you're able to bring home the bacon and can support your future family. Because God forbid she works also. Or that doesn't is... want kids. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, my God. But also, yes, give me food. Yeah. I mean, obviously. If mozzarella I, sticks I'm are hungry, involved, just but hit has, me with it. I don't care who's yeah. paying. I will put I'm that on a starving. credit card. I'm mm-hmm. starving. So, six. duh, feed me, but I don't really care if you can support our family that won't happen <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just well i just want jalapeno poppers like, <laughs> this isn't hard side of ranch okay so number six <laughs> don't be too eager guy or gal it's embedded in the human psyche that being too available is unattractive it is it not only comes across as desperate and desperate is annoying but it also destroys the thrill of pursuing someone not just men but all humans love a good chase that's very don't ever let them know them. you like them <laughs> don't compliment them. Don't say nice things to them. <laughs> don't return their phone calls. Don't Wait listen when words are coming out of their mouth. To that t- okay, <laughs> here's my favorite one. Number seven. Oh, pay attention no. to your scent. Oh, <laughs> they have some bacon which, grease behind those ears. Don't reek. <laughs> Yeah. It According says that to, in the article, don't reek. Uh, I might have paraphrased this one, but it's, I wrote, According to Maxim, <laughs> quote, females are a lot more sensitive to B.O. than men. That Preach. could be very true. I mean, it's just like, fucking mm-hmm. duh. Who needs this guide? Shower. Uh, have basic hygiene. Brush your teeth. Don't wear Axe body spray. Okay, here's the dumbest one. Wear more red. No. Great. Great. No. 
You've heard everywhere <laughs> that red looks is a good symbol in red. of love, sex, and desire. And for good reason, it's the most valuable cover, color in your closet. Across the animal kingdom, red indicates dominance, so it seems to trigger something biologically ingrained in women. So good. I'll, I'm certainly looking for a domineering man when I'm out and this about. This is so stupid, it's and so I fucking, fucking love it. <laughs> Men clad in red are perceived as more powerful and higher status. I'm picturing Chairman Matt for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a red running suit with like the white stripes down the side. <laughs> What's that guaranteed Anderson to get movie? you laid. Yes. Oh my God. What's yes. it called? Yeah. I can only one. think of Vanderpump rules. So okay. good. <laughs> His next masterpiece. Oh my God. Uh, okay. So higher status, which is one of the most important things a woman pays attention to when choosing a mate. I don't know how factual that is but whatever and then it <laughs> the article closes out there you have it gentlemen the scientific way to getting a woman's attention or just laid we're not judging <laughs> oh, my oh my god oh my god so uh, fucking gross. but i mean okay. also like whatever Hi. so keep in mind the level of expectation that is put on men with those don't reek yeah is one of them yeah so now let's Should go be a to the seven hundred steps according to Cosmo, that are required for women to of seduce course. men. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Try our fail-safe seduction tips to secure his affections in true Cosmo sex kitten style. <clears throat> oh, my oh, my God. Number one, the right outfit. Less isn't always more when it comes to pulling when it comes to pulling a tire, so leave a little to the imagination. Style icon and seducer of one of the world's hottest fellas, Victoria Beckham, once said, quote, <laughs> I fucking hate this so much, quote, the best way to seduce a man is to wear high heels, tight-fitting jeans, and a figure-hugging t-shirt. Oh, uh, I hate I, you. The best I, way to seduce a man is if he can stick around after you have shared a bed all night with your night farts and then insist on having cold pizza for breakfast. Mm-hmm. That's how you that seduce That's like true love. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Why am I like how straight to that? I don't waste my time, honestly. Victoria Beckham as someone who pulled a hot guy and dresses well versus like a business woman entrepreneur and like right. musical and, sensation. Uh, I'm uh, also yeah. not a fan of the jeans with high heels combination. I like it. I just it. can't wear heels. Some of us Skinny have lower jeans. back pain. Yeah, I can't do heels. <clears throat> I love okay, them. number two. I, I live in my heels. Number two, the FYI, <laughs> which I'm assuming what? is the Fuck you, I? Yeah. Like I E-Y-E? Know. F-Y. Nope. Making eye contact like F-Y-E-Y-E? with... Like F-Y-E-Y-E? F- oh, yeah. F-Y-I. I get it. Like F for your information? F-Y-I. I get it. Okay. Uh, I, I, uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. I was thinking fuck you, I. That seems a little more off-putting than like I want to fuck you. Mm. <laughs> okay. Making eye contact with your target is good, but limit it to a few encouraging glances and a smile. A study by the Social Issues Research Center, because this is a very pressing social issue... Mm-hmm. Found that it that the most common mistake people make when flirting is overdoing eye contact. <laughs> While oh, research from God. Aberdeen University found that a well-directed gaze coupled with a genuine smile makes a person up to eight times more attractive to the opposite sex. Okay, I get it. Don't Just, look at them too much, but look at them a little bit. But don't look at them too much. Don't, don't scare them off, much. but look at them a little bit. Not too much. Classic, classic, like, instructions for women, which is, like, walk this impossible tightrope at all times. Go. Yeah. This is, like, right. the world's worst Ikea bed project build that Men anyone's ever the fucking read. natural look. Do they? Do you know what the <laughs> but natural But make sure you're using implies. makeup to make it look like your face is natural, but there's no way it's actually right. natural. But it better look natural, but you better wear makeup. But if they can tell you're wearing makeup and you're not just naturally that beautiful, <laughs> you're right. never going to get laid or married. <laughs> Cover up all <laughs> blemishes, but like the natural look. Also, fill in your eyebrows and wear mascara. Also, like mm-hmm. bronzer. 
it. <laughs> also spend thousands of dollars a year on skincare so that you can take thousands. a no makeup selfie. Oh my god. Right. My favorite meme is that one that's like, you think you're rocking the no the natural look, but then you catch yourself in the mirror and you look like a Victorian child who won't survive. Make it through the winter. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my daily life. <laughs> I work from home, and some days I put on makeup with no intention of leaving the house just so I don't, like, kind of catch myself off Star- and, yourself. and startle yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I just put towels over all of my mirrors on my in-home days. It's a Victorian morning ritual. <laughs> <laughs> morning your youth. <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously. Okay. Number three, hair play. How a woman oh plays God. with her hair can affect her pulling ability. What's with the pulling? I hate it. I, I hate it. And when we were talking hair, are we talking about the hair on your head or your pubes? Hair. <laughs> <laughs> Important <laughs> distinction to be made here because. Situational. I'm sure Cosmo Situational. If, I, if I'm not supposed to be twirling my pubes <laughs> when I'm on a date, I've been doing it wrong for a long time. It's really explaining a lot. I'm sure also, Cosmo- anytime anyone asks if the carpet matches the drapes, I always just tell them it's all hardwood. How Ick. often do people? A- I hate everything. <laughs> yeah, why are people you? People don't ever ask me that, that often, but my hair is blue, so it's like a common joke. Oh, it's funny. It's hilarious. Yeah, everybody, calm down. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's all hardwood. Okay, continuing <laughs> twiddling with your hair. Ick. Says to <laughs> men, "I'm flirting with you." Putting hair behind your ears says, "I'm open and honest." Oh pulling my your, god. Pulling your hair across your face. I don't what? really know what that's supposed to look like. It's like that <laughs> scene when Michael Scott takes Aaron Hannon out for her Secretary's Day and she's hiding in her hair because <laughs> in the foster home her hair was her room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. I've done that on a date. I totally get it. Okay, so pulling your hair across your face says you have something to hide or are very shy. If you have a habit of doing the latter, kick it now. So, mm-hmm. wow. Listen up, ladies. Don't pull your hair across your face while you're flirting. There was this girl <laughs> that I went to grad school with that I didn't know very well, um, but I had some classes with her, and she had like very luxurious, luscious, thick black hair, and it was very curly and long. And she used to like, manically constantly take a piece of it and run it through her mouth no and then twist it and then release it and then take a new lock and do the same thing like Like i get it anxiety is powerful y'all but i do not want to watch you eat your hair Uh -uh. yeah and then like just Uh -uh. put it back like all of your hair is coated in your own spit yeah, right. uh-uh. like you can't. Mm-hmm. I have I given myself a bald spot from anxiety. Okay, so scratching my head. So I get those nervous ticks. But like mm-hmm. when it's that obvious, like you mm-hmm. need to do something about it. You need to put your hair up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get a scrunchy girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> medication is glorious, and I will. You need Xanax get and a, a scrunchy coffee girl. with you and sit down and go over it in detail. <laughs> oh, honey. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, she had great hair. She did. Um, okay, so the number four USP. I love this infamous seduction artist Russell Brand. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was hoping we were going to get into uh, who was that guy on the pickup artist right. who always wore like a furry top hat. Yeah, that guy. You do need a top you hat. You do need a top oh, hat. Oh, the James Franco pickup artist? That guy? No. No, he like, had Franco. a show on MTV. Yeah, whatever. he had like a reality show on VH1 or oh some shit. Oh my God, I don't recall and I'm not sorry about it. I recall and I am sorry about it. Do you guys remember the show <laughs> Next on MTV? Yeah. No. <laughs> it was so, uh, so brutal. <laughs> so brutal. I love that oh my show. God, I watched it. They're all just the on time. a bus. <laughs> yeah. Like waiting to come out and try and date this person. Oh, <laughs> I wish that was how it really was. In the I real love world. their little intro things. They were always had like the grossest sexual innuendos. Like, yeah. I want to play tennis with you so you can fondle my balls. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh my god. My name's Tina. I'm 14. I have a UTI and I'm ready to party. (laughs) And I'm pierced in all the right places. Oh God. (laughs) It was so nasty. Loved that show. Loved that show. Infamous seduction artist Russell Brand suggests working out your USP. Um, He says, be in tune with your USP, which is your unique selling point. So picture Russell okay. Brand if your you brand. would. Mm-hmm. For me, the idea of a gauche philandering adventurer works quite well. I have <laughs> the hair of a gauche philandering adventurer, the patter of a gauche philandering adventurer, and offer gauche philandering adventures. The brand is consistent. I mean, oh my God, he's that's not wrong. Pretty true, yeah, exactly. He's super self-aware. Ugh. I actually, this this is like five points to Russell Brand. I out of a possible five hundred, and these are the only five points he has <laughs> so far. But like, I'm gonna give them to him. I don't hate Russell Brand, but he's just like such a character that I can't. I I don't. It's he's hard to swallow sometimes. I mm. get too irritated, and I'm also such a character, so I understand that I'm also annoying. What's your USP, Amanda? Oh, my God. Um, Mm. You're gauche uh, and philandering. I mean, I'm not philandering. I like to You wish you were philandering. philandering. I know. I'm not successfully (laughs) philandering. That's for sure. Um, We'll call that flailandering. Flailing. (laughs) Yeah, falling down is part of my brand. Um, (laughs) Gas is part of my brand. Objectifying my dad. Yeah, objectifying Lucy's dad. Those are my three. That's my USP. (laughs) Why am I single? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, I think part of my USP is just, like, high neuroticism. Mm. (laughs) Yeah. Kenyon and I have that in common. We probably have the same USP. (laughs) Okay, next up. You two, the similarities are uncanny. Sweet seduction. Kenyon, you will feel this one so hard. Oh, my God. Studies on sex hormones in women have shown that their production, that their production peaks around ovulation and the resulting natural scent of a woman may help in attracting a mate. So schedule your pulling nights again with the fucking pulling gross Uh to the middle of your menstrual cycle. But don't forget to use protection as this is when you are the most likely to get pregnant. Okay, this is so fucking real. But also, for me, for some reason, it's, like, warped because it's not during ovulation. It's actually during my period. Mm -hmm. Like, every guy who has ever asked me out in the history of ever... Asked me out during my period. During your period? They could smell it on you. They're sharks. No, like, Lucy can attest. She knows, like... This started in middle school. We read a Cosmo article about sex pheromones, and and Kenyon was like, oh, my God, like, my last two boyfriends or, like, my first two boyfriends have asked me out when I'm on my periods that we have been tracking this throughout our lives. Without Tracking this cycle, if you will. (laughs) It is a cycle. (laughs) It's so fucking weird. It's so weird. I hate it, and I love it. Congratulations. Thanks. I hate it. Okay. Here's the next one, which is inexplicably <laughs> called fish fingers. Don't no! like it. No. No. Nope. No. Next. Do away mm-hmm. with cutlery on seduction dinner dates. <laughs> Eating with your fingers is so much more sensual. What? Try seafood This is why I always platters. order mozzarella sticks. Try Spaghetti with meatballs, followed by jalapeno a nice chocolate peppers. mousse. Ugh, lobster <laughs> and oysters. Chocolate really mousse. Eat lobster without a fork. Yeah, you got to use the <laughs> tiny fork to get all the meat out of those claws. <laughs> Ugh, as these dishes are reputed to have aphrodisiac properties. Okay, and remember, it's sexy to share. So feed each other and don't be afraid to lick his fingers clean. No. 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 Think, nope. think get the a, fuck out. Think gentle suck rather than fellatio Stop. demo. Mm-hmm. I hate you so much. This is so, the wor- this is worse than 
my case about chewing the fingerprints off. I mean, yeah, this might be the grossest worse. thing that I've ever had to cover. So keep in mind this fellatio demo concept. It's not okay to do with his fingers, okay? Keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. So next up, uh-huh. Amanda, extreme dating. Yes. The adrenaline right. rush we experience when we're scared or excited or slipping on ice at a rooftop hot tub party. I was is just going to say, or falling next to a pool. <laughs> I caught it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it went in my mouth. You're welcome. Uh, it was a really, it was a gin gimlet and it was really fucking good. Like that bitch is lucky. <laughs> and you got Riesling instead. I'm so sorry. Moscato. <laughs> Which like the generosity of those lovely women, I fully appreciate. Oh, yeah. But what? But like, <laughs> you could Raise the bar for yourselves, ladies. I needed a drink, though. I mean, I had just fallen in a bathing suit, like (laughs) spread-eagled in front of a date, so... Who is probably listening right now. Ooh. (laughs) So, thanks. Hi. (laughs) Thanks. So, that (laughs) adrenaline rush is similar to the hormone surge we have when sexually aroused. Therefore, adrenaline dates can act as hot foreplay. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> Forget going to the cinema and visit an adventure park instead. <laughs> no, I like the cinema because <laughs> popcorn. You... Oh my god! Also, just like every time I've been to an amusement park, I've vomited pretty much. Oh so... god! <laughs> Kenyon hates amusement parks so much. I hate them too. I fucking hate them. <laughs> oh, they I guess reek. I'm going to Harry Potter World alone. There's in just Florida. vomit everywhere. <laughs> Everybody stinks. Everyone's shoving. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Children are crying. Everything is overpriced. It's hot. Mm-hmm. Children okay. all have that like. That like mustache mouth. from like a yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Why is your mouth so red? I know. Why? <laughs> it's either bright red or bright blue. Like, Why? Get a fucking uh. grip. <laughs> <laughs> Kenyon's been triggered by Kool Aid mouth. So triggered. By I think I would rather eat. A human then have a child with Kool Aid mouth. <laughs> oh my God! Well, get ready They're because not you mutually are exclusive, my planning friend. on having children, and every child experiences Kool Aid mouth without fail. Like you uh, can't avoid it. Uh, I'm just gonna keep a lot of Clorox wipes on hand. <laughs> oh my God! You're gonna wipe your kid's mouth with bleach if they well, deserve if it. If it works. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm calling CPS to just start an account on all of you before you even have kids. <laughs> CPS sneaks in and just sterilizes me in the middle of the night. Preemptive file. Yeah, seriously. It's preventative. Oh <laughs> okay. Next up, tantric seduction. Ugh. Ugh okay. In tantra, <laughs> it's believed that sucking a lover's lip sends a signal via the body's energy pathways straight to the sex chakra an erogenous zone behind the sacrum, which is the triangular bone at the base of the spine. So suck it and see. (laughs) If you're already making out, I guarantee that their sacrum is already ignited or whatever the fuck. Yeah, there's already blood going to the penis at this point. It might be encouraging you to just, like, approach them and just latch onto their lower lip. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Give them the Kylie Jenner lip suck. It's just (laughs) massive by the time you're done. (laughs) I think I'm doing this wrong. Oh, my God. I love this. That's adult Kool-Aid mouth. (laughs) Ew. (laughs) It's just a chapped ring around (laughs) their whole mouth. You you open your mouth really wide and put their mouth inside of your mouth and just start inhaling deeply and see what happens. Oh, my God. (laughs) I wonder if you could suffocate someone like that if it was just like a vacuum hose attached to their face. They can't. Dude, there's only one way to find out. (laughs) Oh, my God. Kenyon, that reminds me of when you and I tried to blow up those floaty rings at my cabin. <laughs> uh, they, well, they almost like found our dead bodies just like <laughs> sprawled in the back room at the oh cabin covered in I like tried cheap blowing floaties. It up, like, the regular way, like with my mouth, and it was <laughs> taking forever, and I almost passed out. So I had oh, Kenyon no. come in and help me with the. Oh, what's that <laughs> called? It's not a vacuum, it's like a. You can, like, suck up big chunks with it. Whatever. Whatever. It's, like, not really a vacuum. Sounds a lot like a vacuum, but (laughs) okay. 
No, like the big, <laughs> whatever. Anyway. Industrial. It worked. We went swimming. No, I went swimming. Kenyon did not go swimming. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. Okay, next up, the first kiss down there. Woo, mm. here we go. Now I'm listening. Well, I dare you to try this. <laughs> when oh, God. You're, when you're ready to take it to the next level, wait until your man gives you a really passionate kiss, then move your lips to his ear and whisper, that's exactly how I want you to kiss my insert Pussy. The ter- insert the term for clitoris <laughs> that you're most comfortable using. <laughs> clitoris. My big old clam. <laughs> <laughs> My clam jam. Are the there other jam. words for clitoris? I don't know. Oh my god. <gasps> My tiny lady penis. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder Jesus. if any of this will work. My bundle of cells. My earthworm gym. <laughs> My earthworm gym. <laughs> if your body is close enough, you'll probably feel his response before you hear it. Ew, oh I hate God. this article yeah. so much. Are we almost I'll dis- feel his boner done. disintegrating once I whisper. <laughs> That's exactly how I want you to kiss my earthworm gym. <laughs> For the record, my clit doesn't look I'm like an earthworm, dying. but, you know. I'm fucking dying of crying. <laughs> we just, we oh should start God. a podcast that's just I want to try this so Cosmo bad. advice. Uh, <laughs> kiss my lucky rabbit's foot. <laughs> okay. It's soft and covered in fur. Okay. <laughs> Ew. Okay. Next up. Feet feet first. Oh, no. no. Let's just take a minute to recall all of Maxim's rules with their low fucking (laughs) sub-level expectations for men. Uh, Don't reek. (laughs) Okay, yeah. Men, don't reek. The only requirement that a woman... Women... Seducing a long-term lover sometimes requires a little effort. It really okay. doesn't. Start. <laughs> yeah. I mean, start with his feet, which are packed with nerve endings. Nope. Hence, nope. hence why Sorry, they're nope. often so ticklish. Nope. Soak them and wash <laughs> them. Nope. 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 Not Jesus. Not doing at it. Least, I know. I'm not that generous at all. Nope. At least then you'll know they're clean enough to play with. Then massage them with edible oil or lube. Oh, my God. Paying particular attention to the area between his toes. No. (laughs) I did not. Why? Why would I pay that area particular attention? No. That's where the jam lives. Finish by sucking each toe. No. (laughs) Think fellatio demo rather than gentle suck. Oh, so you're well, telling good. me okay. I can't fellatio demo on the finger, but I'm supposed to go right. down on his big Gently toe. suck the fingers, blow the toes. <laughs> <laughs> Do not confuse the two or you'll never get laid for the rest of your life, apparently. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, I hate this so much. I, You know what? My vibrator's fine. <laughs> if I have to do any of this, mm-hmm. I'm fine. All right, I don't I've only got two people. more. And they're just uniquely horrible for their own reasons. Great. Mm. All right. Burlesque babe. The craze for burlesque (laughs) is in full swing. (laughs) So why not join in? Invest. Mm. Keyword invest because this shit is not (laughs) cheap. Expensive. Yeah. Invest in frill bottomed knickers, stockings, and tasseled nipple pasties. I mean. What? Next. Practice twirling your tassels. <laughs> what? Uh, oh. I'm demoing uh, right now. You can't see it, but yeah. I am. You guys, oh, me too. my boobs are so like weird and long that if I <laughs> put on Casey's, which I would need an enormously custom size for, first of all. Second of all, if I tried to twirl these bad boys, like my dude's getting a black eye. Like it's a not, it's dangerous. It's a dangerous situation. I can't so twirl these. It'd be like spinning. It'd be one like spinning a garden hose. One would spin in a full 360, and the other one would just kind of like back and Slap forth. Slap along. 
Uh, Bounce off the other one. I only have one fully developed breast. They are not (laughs) considering my needs. I feel personally attacked by this listicle. I have friends who are like talented burlesque dancers, and I don't know how they achieve this, because I'm not going to sit here and say I haven't tried. I can tell you right now, next sentence, this is done by bouncing on your heels until you find the right rhythm. Yeah, some of us never find the right rhythm, okay? Some of us never find it. (laughs) When you've mastered the technique, add some layers to be slowly removed in front of your man before showing him your new trick. He'll soon be in a spin. Can you (laughs) imagine going on a first date and going home and someone has been wearing nipple tassels? The whole time. (laughs) (laughs) One at your date at Buga de Beppo. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> or one fell off and they can't find it. It's like, ooh. <laughs> it's at the restaurant. They make you it's call in the, the bread restaurant to ask. <laughs> it's like a $35 nipple tassel. All right. Last but not least, and I'm sure you ladies are going to be raring to go for this technique this oh, weekend. Can't wait. Invite your man over for dinner. Give him the key and tell him to let himself in. Never On give the way- him the key. On the way yeah, seriously, home. seriously, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I barely let Corey have a key. We own this Zach house together. does not have a key to this house. <laughs> Why? You two are married. I know. He, okay, I made him one. He never used it. And finally, we got the locks changed or whatever. And then I, I was like, do I really need to get him a key? He's never, ever, ever once used it. So I just got two made and one is for me and one is for the housekeeper. And oh one is for God. your dog. <laughs> that is incredible. Wow. I'm not lying to you All you, you have guys. to do is lock your door and you get a night alone. This is, I've a, done this that. is brilliant. Okay. <laughs> so invite your man over to his own home for dinner. Give him your key and tell him to let himself in. <laughs> On the way home, buy a sashimi dinner box. From a no. gas station. Half like, price. <laughs> I know, right? From, From Lungs and Byerly's. Poison him without a trace. <laughs> I love you so <laughs> Blame the gas station for inferior sashimi. Explain you just weren't hungry that night, and that's why you didn't eat any. Stab him with an icicle for good measure. What? Oh okay. Where do you get an icicle? Oh, 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 I get it, I get it. Like a Not everyone lives in South Africa, Kenyon. Really unoriginal murder scheme. Get. I'm looking at an icicle right now inside of my apartment. That's <laughs> how thought, fucking cold it is. Surrounded by quoting, icicles. I thought she was quoting the article, and this was no. already oh. convoluted enough. I was All like, right. what? I'm back to quoting the article. Light candles, then get naked and lie on your dinner no. table or a pretty picnic blanket on your floor. Nah, I'm good. Carefully place the sashimi across your contours, then push the box aside and wait for him to discover his Sex in the City style seduction. And I'm sure he'll get the reference and not be freaked out even a tiny bit. Be sure I to would wipe. cover myself in like cheese curds, chicken fingers, and mozzarella sticks, though. And I then, would, like in the curvature of my belly, there'd be marinara. Where would you put the wasabi, <laughs> though? Like wasabi That's why lipstick. I would not do wasabi. I can't That's eat sushi without wasabi. There's no only. fucking point. Y'all, yeah, I'm yeah, but just I just threw I up a little bit sushi. in my mouth. I can't. Oh. I can't with this entire list. So clearly. It's- From the 15 comments that Cosmo (laughs) gives and the four that Maxim gives. We've got our work cut out for us, ladies. I want to burn everything to the ground. I just want to go back to don't reek. Don't reek. (laughs) (laughs) I want to go back to the Renaissance era where everyone's only requirement was don't reek, but also everyone reeks, so it's fine. (laughs) Survive the plague, don't reek. Wear red. (laughs) Survive plague, don't reek. I haven't worn red in literal years. I do not own a piece of red clothing. Kenyon's the only one of us who actually looks good in red. Yeah, I like red. Lucy and I do not look good in red. No. Mm. It accentuates the bags under my eyes. <laughs> my ghoulish look. Your sweet, sunken eyes. <laughs> All right. Well, that is good to know how to seduce oh. because uh, if you need to pull someone, pull, 
someone Ugh. into your murder plot, yeah. seduction's a good way to go. I'm taking all of these notes out into the field, people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Report I'm doing back. It. I will. <laughs> Actually, that we should start a podcast where Lucy and I read you Cosmo tips, and I and have then to you try go, them. Like, you try them out. It's and like an earpiece. Yes. Oh my god. That's how I want you to kiss my earthworm. <laughs> <laughs> no. It would need also, to be a camera yeah. show. It couldn't be a podcast because we'd have right. to capture the reactions. Yeah, it would have oh to be god. a YouTube no show. One, no, no one's going to sign the release <laughs> to release the footage of me bringing someone back into my bedroom <laughs> and seducing them into kissing my earthworm gym. Putting a cheese no curds all over your that. body. <laughs> and marinara sauce in your belly button. In my belly button. Your cavernous <laughs> belly button. You can get marinara and ranch. Nipple tassels no, are your tax I don't write-off. like ranch. I will not be supplying ranch. If he wants ranch, he can bring his own and he can dip it in the other room. He can dip it in I'll the other room. I'll be in the other button. room with some a bowl of ranch. All right. <laughs> Lucy's in the other room. With a bowl of ranch. <laughs> Let's get a word from our sponsors <sighs> while we still have them. Molecule is a complete reinvention of the air purifier. Not just an improvement on existing, outdated technology. I love that. Molecule introduces a breakthrough science that Mm -hmm. is finally capable of destroying air pollutants at a molecular level. Can't tell you how much I need this in my bathroom. Kill them! Molecule's (laughs) PECO technology goes beyond HEPA filtration to not just capture but completely destroy the full spectrum of indoor air pollutants, including those 1,000 times smaller than a HEPA filter can trap. Come on now. I know. Science. That's that's amazing. Science. Um, Science, y'all. A molecule makes a meaningful impact for asthma and allergy sufferers as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So in a study of 49 allergy sufferers presented at the American College of Asthma, Allergy, Mm. and Immunology, nailed it, Molecule's (laughs) technology provided dramatic, statistically significant, sustained symptom reduction within a week of use. One week. Say that five times fast. (laughs) The results have transformed lifelong allergy and asthma sufferers' lives. One customer even said that she was able to breathe through her nose for the first time in 15 years. I believe it. How life-changing that would be. I love it. I believe it. (laughs) (laughs) Molecules technology has been personally effective and verified by science, but Mm -hmm. most importantly, it's Mm -hmm. been tested by real people like me. Mm -hmm. Molecule had already helped allergy and asthma sufferers around the country better cope with their conditions and significantly reduce their Mm -hmm. symptoms. I can vouch for this. Uh, I have a Molecule unit in my bedroom, and I'm not lying. The air smells better. And also, Mm -hmm. we have two cats, and my husband snores like a banshee, and I refuse Mm. to believe that he is allergic to our children, so like, we're not even Mm. going there. Since we had your children being your cats, right. since we Got put it. in this molecule, uh, he his the snoring has gone down like majorly. It's oh, unreal. Wow. It reduces unreal. that pet dander. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fantastic! I love, I love it. it. So. For $75 off your first order, visit Molecule.com, that's spelled M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E dot com, and at checkout, enter the promo code GALS, G-A-L-S. Again, you get $75 off your first order at Molecule.com, and at checkout, enter that promo code GALS. Treat your nose. Who says comfy can't be work appropriate? If your mm-hmm. definition of comfy is no pants, then maybe you should stick with that. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. not appropriate. But Beta Brand, which makes actual pants, wants you to look good <laughs> and feel good even at the office. Their Love dress it. pant yoga pant, which all three of us have and are loving, mm-hmm. features mm-hmm. ultra comfy styles designed to impress. They're wrinkle resistant. They've got mm-hmm. four-way stretch. So, like, you can... You can bend over in these puppies. So much room for activities. So Mm -hmm. much room. 
They have all the details that make them look like, you know, normal adult uh, dress, dress pants. pants. Yeah. <laughs> Faux zippers, pockets, front buttons, belt loops, all that. They have all different kinds of shapes and sizes, tastes. Everything mm. that could be appropriate for whatever you're looking for. Boot cut, straight legs, skinny, cropped. Mm -hmm. They have a trillion colors. Black, mm. navy, gray, khaki. Some seasonal, some limited edition, some patterns. And they've got four lengths to choose from for, and even styles featuring functional pockets. Gotta love a functional pocket. <laughs> yep. Beta Brand connects shoppers and designers to bring new ideas to life. They have so many products on their website, people. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. blown away. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Hundreds of designers, thousands of designs. Check it out. You will find what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. And speaking of what I was looking for, I ordered two pairs of the <laughs> skinny leg black dress pant yoga yes. pants. Y'all. Magic pants. Y'all. Magic mm -hmm. pants. Okay, so... I, my body is a Frankenstein's monster of miscellaneous parts. I have discussed this many times, <laughs> but the sizing of these pants, it is so great because like Lucy mentioned before, they offer all kinds of different shapes and sizes. So I went with what I think might be an oxymoron, but it made me feel good. The large petite. <laughs> <laughs> There's something for everyone. Everyone. <laughs> so these fit great because I have a huge butt. So like I love the four-way stretch. I love how these just slip right on, fit nice and snug. But I'm also only like five foot two. So for me, shopping for pants can often be really hard because I find them that fit properly in the waist, the hip, and the booty, but then they're way too long. Mm -hmm. So the large petite is great without me having to buy like a cropped pant. But you can get them cropped too if you want. It's amazing. They're so comfortable. Like Lucy said, they have all the little details that just look like a, a high quality, beautiful pair of dress pants. I can pop them on for a more like dressed up look with some really cute patent leather heels that I have, oh, little black wow. heels and like a white dress shirt that you can tuck in because it has the belt loops. I can put this really cute, like skinny little black belt with it. And then I'm ready to rock and roll for like an event. I or, saw you in that exact outfit and you look yeah. So professional. I've never seen I know. you look that professional. <laughs> it's so professional looking. And I just love like the four-way stretch is amazing. It fits better than a pair of jeans because there's no there aren't like gaps and places where mm -hmm. the, the rigid fabric just kind of falls away from the body. It's like I look slim and trim and professional and ready to go. I get compliments on them all the time. And I'm like beta brand, beta brand, beta brand. So, so Ron, don't walk. <laughs> so for these reasons and many more. Uh, we all started wearing Beta Brand's dress pant yoga pants. Visit betabrand.com slash gals, that's all lowercase G-A-L-S, to get 20% off yours. Millions of women agree these are the most comfortable pants you'll ever wear to work. That's betabrand.com, B-E-T-A-B-R-A-N-D.com forward slash gals, G-A-L-S, all lowercase on the gals. And mm -hmm. Get 20% off your dress pant yoga pants treat yo work attire. Treat yo professionalism. So, just to preface, uh, our lovely fan picker also picked my case and the case that almost killed you. The case that almost <laughs> killed me. It is fucking bizarre. Um, it's also really complicated. So I fucking did my best, you guys. At one point, I some uh, parts of my notes will be very detailed and parts of my notes will be like, where did that come from? And that's because I had to just call it at a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> folks, folks who have watched the four part documentary Evil Genius on Netflix will be able to follow along. <laughs> It's so um, good. And if you haven't watched it and you're still confused by Kenyon's case, just go fucking watch it. Just go yep. watch it because this just case turn needs this off and watch it. a minimum of five hours to get through it. So, okay. Um, August 28th, 2003, my future husband turned 16 years old. Oh, my God. <laughs> and also more the end. Special thanks. <laughs> Where he ties into all of this, I'm not yet sure. Um, 
but <laughs> without a doubt, he does somewhere. <laughs> But more pertinent to the story, in Erie, Pennsylvania, 46-year-old pizza delivery man Brian Wells gets called to make a delivery. Brian had never finished high school and had worked at the Mamma Mia Pizzeria, spelled Yum. pizza dash Ria. Oh, no. <clears throat> <laughs> That's Pennsylvania for you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> for <Sorry>. almost... <laughs> For almost 30 years. Still, the address for this pizza delivery was unusual. 8631 Peach Street, a television transmission tower located in the middle of some woods at the end of a dirt road. So not a home. Like literally just a tower in the woods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. According to Brian's later statements, what happened next can hardly be believed. He claimed that when he arrived at the tower with the two pizzas in hand, they were sausage and pepperoni, both small. Yum. If you're ordering two small pizzas, Just get a large wrong with you. Get half a large on one and right. half on the other. Obviously, Maybe. you're a psychotic murderer. Yeah, you deserve this. <laughs> um, Red flags already. <laughs> he said three, quote, black men, although he never was able to describe them in more detail. Oh, Jesus. Uh, locked a bomb around his neck. They then forced him to go on an elaborate scavenger hunt in order to get the bomb removed from his neck before it went off. This is what he yep. says. Wells was given two pages of extremely detailed handwritten notes for completing the scavenger hunt, like way too detailed to be followed. Like if I were writing a murder scavenger hunt note. Yep. <laughs> the bomb would go off before, before you, you finish said, the first Fuck page. it, we're doing it live. <laughs> okay. Yep. So these notes, quote, listed a series of strictly timed tasks to collect keys that would delay the detonation and eventually defuse it. Additionally, it warned that Wells would be under constant surveillance and any attempts to contact authorities would result in the bomb's detonation, like remote detonation. Yikes. <clears throat> quote, this powerful booby trap bomb can be removed. Oh, this is a quote from the note. This powerful booby trapped bomb can be removed only by following our instructions. Then in all caps, Act now. Think later or you will die! Exclamation no, point. No, Scrawled at the bottom. <clears throat> Little instructive drawings were also scattered throughout the notes. Oh, good! <laughs> I love a visual aid. <laughs> Indicating visual cues for finding the next piece of the puzzle, like a McDonald's drive through sign. Not necessary to draw. They all look the same. You can say <laughs> McDonald's drive through sign. <laughs> Some of them are still brown. I saw a brown one not too long ago. Well, they, well this was not color drawings anyway. So, Oh, well, then fuck it. And also a flower bed with, with a rock with a note taped to it where that would be. Okay. So I, like literally it was like <laughs> little sketch of a rock pointing arrow rock. Oh, my God. Don't even bother trying to draw a rock. Like, no one can draw a rock, except maybe Georgia <laughs> O'Keeffe. <laughs> and even then, it's just a vagina. So It's just a vagina. <laughs> it's just an it's earthworm It's my gym. earthworm gym. <laughs> <laughs> Wells was also given a homemade shotgun resembling a walking cane and instructed to rob the nearby PNC bank as the start of his hunt. Which, like, they've just given you a gun. Can't you threaten them with your cane gun to yeah, remove the Yeah, but don't you have a bomb around your neck? I mean, I don't know. It just <clears throat> seems a little yeah. rough. At approximately 2.30 p.m., Brian Wells, still wearing this large box-shaped bomb around his neck but it was oddly covered up with a white T-shirt with a guest logo on the front. Incredible. <clears throat> Entered the bank and initially waited in line at the bank. Oh. I know, just like out of habit, before deciding to push to the front of the queue and slide a note to the teller. 
He'd been instructed to steal $250,000, but the teller wasn't able to access the bank vault and could only give him $8,702 that she had at the counter. Video surveillance shows an eerily calm Wells in the bank swinging around the cane gun. <laughs> Just and doing a like <laughs> when you're blue and you don't know where <laughs> you go <laughs> to. Why don't you go where fashion The WB fits. frog. Put another <laughs> <Yes. laughs> The candy man can. <laughs> There's a bomb super not the funny, but like, <laughs> the that's pizza amazing. man can. <laughs> um, so, swinging the cane gun around and casually strolling, he even popped a free lollipop from the counter into his mouth. I mean, <laughs> never pass up a free lollipop. I don't think he knew where this day was heading. <laughs> also, I just, for all of our listeners outside of Minnesota, in Minnesota, we call lollipops suckers. Well, some assholes do. <laughs> I do. Well, you're not, you're not I like, Amanda's not really from there, so she doesn't know. I'm not know. like other girls. <laughs> <laughs> but we call them suckers, and I had never, ever called it anything else until college, and I called it that and got, like, eviscerated by people. Yep. Yeah, I rightfully think I so. Suckers in Iowa, but I also haven't had a sucker since I was twelve, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you go to the bank? I have a sucker <laughs> like twice a month. <laughs> Mine don't have suckers. That is, they definitely illegal. do. You have I don't like candy them. in general. I just oh, get out. All right, <clears throat> so Who invited you. The <clears throat> takeaway from this is that sour hairy bows, though. Are called suckers, <laughs> and also Brian Wells did not look like a man who had just been taken hostage and was caught in no, a weird he's fucking game. Doing a routine in the bank lobby with his fucking <laughs> cane, putting gun. on the Ritz. <laughs> he's literally putting on the Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as Wells left the bank, the folks in there dialed nine one one, obviously, and about fifteen minutes later, police spotted Wells next to his car in the parking lot of Eyeglass World. Yep, upgrading that prescription. They approached with guns drawn and handcuffed him without a struggle. Um, there is video, um, and the the video is actually from. Like, this whole thing, this whole, like, pseudo standoff was actually broadcast by numerous TV channels at the time. And it's fucked Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. It's really uncomfortable. It fucked me up for days when I saw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's extended video of this whole thing. And it shows Wells sitting, like, sort of cross-legged in front of his vehicle as officers retreat back a safe distance after they've handcuffed him. And they, they just, like, keep the guns on him. Brian sort of calmly calms out to the officers. What did I say? Brian sort of, I'm kind of drunk. Brian sort of calmly calls out to the officers about the bomb around his neck, insisting that he is a victim in this whole scenario, and that's why he robbed the bank. But, like, that's got to be hard to explain with a bomb around your neck. Right, right. He also repeatedly begs for the bomb to be removed from his neck, but the officers do not approach him again. At 3.04 p.m., police call a bomb squad to the scene, but ironically, because they had shut down the roads in the area because of a fucking bomb threat, that caused a traffic jam and actually slowed the bomb squad's arrival to the scene. Oh, Oh, no. no. So they were protecting the public, but then it took longer. Yeah. Always check for a bomb caller. Always. (laughs) At this a point the bomb around Brian Wells's neck has begun beeping. Not a good sign. Yeah, no. nope. I don't Shit's like it. It's active. And he appears increasingly nervous and insistent for help, calling out, It's gonna go off. I'm not lying. Oh my God. Uh, it's taking me back Ew. to watching this footage. My blood pressure is going up. Yeah. Only because I've seen this video and I don't like it. Also, I'm just eating potato chips. <laughs> That, the sodium. (laughs) And then at 3.18 p.m., 25 minutes after police first arrested him and just three minutes before the bomb squad arrived, um, the explosive went off. 
Mm, poor mm. guy. <laughs> the bomb blast blew a, quote, fist-sized hole in Wells's chest. And yeah. he died within minutes, still handcuffed at the scene. Shit. I'm kind of shocked that he didn't die right away, honestly. He w- it shows the explosion in the video, and it's, like, n- not a joke. Yeah, he, I mean, there's, he, nothing could have saved him. No, but I think but, he, like, yeah. still technically had a pulse for, like, a minute, and then. <sighs> so. Well, I hope he went quickly. Yeah, I hope he I was I mean, I think it was pretty instant from the video where they show it. Right. Looked like it happened pretty quick. I hope he enjoyed all his, all over his the sucker. Ground. What flavor sucker do you think it was? I don't know, but I should have found raspberry. out. Always go with blue. Always. Blue? What the fuck is yes. wrong with you? Definitely. Red or green? Nothing, nothing's wrong with us. What's wrong with you? Red or green? Green? Yeah. Who has yeah, green? Yeah, what the fuck? Okay. Green? green apple. Get out. Just red. Let's just stick with red. Red. Why would we trust someone who two minutes ago said, I don't even like candy? <laughs> Well, I did when I was 12 and younger. Ugh. Do you guys remember those suckers that had like the, it wasn't a stick, but it was like a loop? Yep. Oh, like yeah. Like the safety suckers. Those were the Those best. were great. Those, those were great. Yep. My hometown bank had those. If okay. anybody wants to send a bag of those to our P.O. box. Mm-hmm. No, because not- I'll get them first. I'll throw them all away. No, <laughs> yeah, just you'll kidding. bring them eat, to me. I will eat those. Also, sour hairy bows. Thank you. Can neither of you start eating candy that gets sent to our fucking mailbox? Do I have to I, go over? No, no I can't okay. promise anything. No. All yeah, right. sorry. You're just going to have to move back here, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nothing like this had ever happened before in Erie, Pennsylvania, or maybe anywhere else, and investigators were baffled. In the hours after Brian's violent death, they tried completing the scavenger hunt themselves, but when, oh, great. <laughs> but when they got to the third clue, a jar in some nearby woods, it was empty. It didn't have any further instructions. Oh, my so God. So they were just going to, this scavenger hunt was horseshit. This guy was going to die no matter what. Or yeah. once he did die, whoever, you know, started the scavenger hunt went and got the key to, like, I don't know, try to destroy but, evidence. But why would they leave the jar there? Also, why would there be a key at all? Right. I kind of forgot where this is going. Well, me too. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> who are like, we about? over the next several hours, Canyon will be <laughs> going over. I try. I tried to write it concisely, you guys. Likely, the perpetrators of this charade. Uh, had been watching them all along, and one investigator noticed a blue van possibly observing their progress on the scavenger hunt, Mm. Um, but it was some distance away, and they weren't able to chase it down at the time. Investigators concluded that there was no possible way Brian could have successfully completed the scavenger hunt in the time allotted, and that he'd been meant to die from the beginning. Yup. Still, they couldn't say conclusively whether Wells was an innocent victim or a willing participant in the plot because of the, like, Mm. bank footage where he just seems so calm. Mm. Yeah. Well, he kind of just thought it was a game, though, right? Or that it was a fake bomb. Fake bomb and just, like, a game? I don't know. They're figuring, they don't know at this point. They're figuring it out. Investigators examined the physical evidence left behind. The collar bomb included four locks and a combination dial, as well as two kitchen timers and a bunch of red herring materials, like wires that led to nothing and, like, a, a old mobile phone that looked like maybe it was, like, a counter as well. Yikes. Like it had a bunch of sh- random shit in it that actually ended up not being necessary and was just put in there to like. But make if it- anyone did try to dismantle this bomb, it would be really fucking confusing. Right, exactly. <clears throat> it had been meticulously assembled and a lot like the instruction notes <laughs> was overwrought, just like myself trying to get through this case. <laughs> <laughs> Draw a rock. The collar was triple banded metal like a giant handcuff. The coroner actually had to behead 
the corpse yeah. of Brian Wells in order yeah. to yeah. remove the booby trapped bum from his neck. Yeah, and his I remember the family, family was, was super like pissed, right? Really they were upset about it. Not happy about that piece. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, do you, they wanted to do like an open casket or something? If well, I recall, it, it and might it's have like, been a religious thing because like desecration of a body is a serious thing in a lot of religions. Yeah, I think they were just I don't remember really that upset from the, about the whole thing, but also like, what do you expect the coroner to risk? Well, and the bomb is evidence. Like they have to, they have to take the collar. They have right. to. Right. Well, yeah, I can see it both ways. I don't necessarily personally agree with the family side of things, but I can definitely see why there would have been a lot of resistance there. Right. Um. On August 31st, there was another bizarre turn in the case. A fellow pizza delivery guy at the Pizza Ria <laughs> that worked with Brian Wells, Robert Thomas Panetti, was found deceased in his home. Panetti had drawn the suspicion of investigators when he became, quote, paranoid after the collar bomb incident and, quote, changed his behavior. But also, like, if somebody targeted one of you. Yeah, I'd be paranoid too. Yeah, and probably change my behavior as well. So anyway, police were scheduled to interview him the next day, but Panetti died of a drug overdose before they could, and there's speculation over whether this was an accidental overdose or not, um, and whether he'd been involved in the plot or if he was just, like, spooked by it. Mm. We don't know. Three weeks later, police get a call from a man named Bill Rothstein, who lived not far from the radio tower. Rothstein told them that a corpse was hidden in a chest freezer in his garage. Casual. <laughs> <laughs> this took a turn. But he claimed that he had nothing to do with the man's death. <laughs> Okay. There's a corpse in my garage, but I didn't have anything to do with it. I have nothing to do with it. It's been here for a long time. <laughs> I found it there. Uh, he said the murder victim was a man named James Roden, and he'd been murdered by his fiance, Marjorie Deal Armstrong, uh, in a dispute over money. Rothstein claimed that he had simply volunteered to help Marjorie hide and dispose of the body, nothing more. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> but that he'd chickened out and was now contacting the police to have them apprehend old Marge. Oh, Marge. Old Marge. <laughs> old Miss. Marge. Old Tad. Is old Tad. Large Marge. <laughs> Marjorie and Rothstein were old friends. The pair had even dated back in the 60s and 70s. But now Rothstein said that he was deathly afraid of Marjorie, who he called extremely intelligent, dangerous, and manipulative. Okay. Police followed I up. I have been described similarly. <laughs> Continue. That's your UPS or whatever. <laughs> USP. <laughs> Police followed up on the call, and after finding Roden's body, which was in the freezer, and it was frozen to the sides of the freezer, and it took days to thaw it out. Oh, no. Oh, wow. That is a chilly freezer. Days? Yeah, yeah maybe turn down the settings on that freezer, Rothstein. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, but you want it are to going. be frozen <laughs> like it was doing its job but if it took days to thaw out from just the sides of the freezer that's mm -hmm. like real cold well they didn't want to damage it at all because it was such important evidence so they didn't want to like hack at it right pull it yeah so they brought in both Rothstein and Marjorie for questioning but before police arrived Bill Rothstein wrote a suicide note although he didn't appear to attempt suicide, uh, that curiously noted, quote, this has nothing to do with the Wells case. Okay. Don't look over here. <laughs> <laughs> look a bird. I love that. <laughs> Don't think about an elephant. So... <laughs> a little bit about Marge. Um, in her younger years, Marjorie Deal Armstrong was known for her dazzling intelligence. She had, quote, an almost encyclopedic knowledge of literature, history, and the law. 
she graduated near the top of her high school class and had a graduate degree, I think, in education um, or sociology. She had a BA in one and a master's in the other. I don't know which. Um, she also would be the first to tell you <laughs> about her past beauty and seductive powers over men. So let's go to the drive. Oh, no. Did she wear a lot of red? She did actually wear a lot of... There's a photo of her in red. Wait a minute. She's on to something. Oh, no. But do you see the photos of young Marge? Yeah, and then the photos of current Marge. Yeah. Yeah. It's jarring. I still think young Marge looks like an... She looks like a a member of the Munsters. A hundred percent. I wouldn't trust young Marge. Yeah, she looks like the the Frankenstein amongst the Adams family. Wait, Munsters yeah. or Adams family? Is it the same Munst- thing? Munsters. I'd say Munsters, but not the like one daughter in the Munsters. Um, okay. Whatever. I, I whatever. So she had definitely like mm-hmm. some sort of narcissism, maybe narcissistic personality disorder, because she was always going on about how beautiful she had been blah 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 i mean people will be saying this about me one day (laughs) she was an attractive person but i guess i've only i had only ever seen the young photos of her after i knew what the fuck she did in recent times so it's hard to look at this and be like yeah she looks normal (laughs) <laughs> she looked, she used to look normal and she no longer looks normal. She never looked like a fucking movie star. Yeah, it's not like this is, you know. Right. I don't know. Whatever. She was no She's Victoria no Selena Gomez. Beckham <laughs> wearing heels and jeans and a tight fitting t shirt. <laughs> right. Um, sucking on toes. So. Oh. <laughs> but, I did briefly I long can't. ago. Stop. Cut it off. No. Nope. Sleep with a guy. Nope. Cut who it liked off. to suck <laughs> my toes. And I was like, I'm nope. getting nothing out of this. I don't like I it. I don't like it. I really toes. liked it. Mm-mm. Right? So, no. <laughs> mm. Well, not Kenyon good. doesn't like anyone touching her toes at all, right? Me Aren't you long, totally averse took, to toe touch? Took me a very long time to be okay with pedicures. I was like a full adult before I could have pedicures. Okay, so into adulthood, Marjorie's untreated mental illness, which was characterized by bipolar disorder and extreme hoarding behaviors, took over her life. So that's sad. Mm-hmm. At one point, police discovered hundreds of pounds of rotting butter and cheese in her home. Um, as well rotting as rotting butter, mm-hmm, as well as the corpses of stray cats and like just a lot of cats in general, but some of them were dead. Uh, okay, it would take a long time for butter to rot, right? Not if there are eight hundred yeah. pounds of it sitting in a room. Uh, have you been to the Iowa State Fair? <laughs> but they have this that's in a refrigerated room, like James I Roden's guess. final yeah. resting place. So <laughs> yeah, this right. wasn't the first time Marjorie had been accused of murdering a boyfriend. She'd been acquitted of shooting a different lover to death in 1984 in an act she'd claimed was self-defense. And James Roden, the recent victim, had also been shot to death with a 12-gauge shotgun. Rothstein admitted to helping melt down the murder weapon and scatter the pieces around the vicinity. Okay. Also in 1988, Marjorie's husband, uh, Richard Armstrong, died in a strange, quote, accident... So he had a cerebral hemorrhage after supposedly falling and hitting his head on a coffee table in their home. After falling down a set of stairs with an owl being found in the home. (laughs) Covered in (laughs) owl feathers that were purchased from (laughs) Hobby Lobby. (laughs) Some were pink. (laughs) Brightly dyed owl owl feathers. Um, 
In custody, Marjorie placed the blame for James Roden's death squarely on Bill Rothstein's shoulders, claiming that he was in love and obsessed with her and that he'd murdered her live-in boyfriend Roden out of jealousy. Okay. Bill Rothstein cut a similar profile to Marjorie. He was verbose and articulate. He also spoke fluent French and Hebrew. He is Kenyon loves my him. future. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how he ties in. <laughs> I aspire to be Bill Rothstein. Um, <laughs> oh, he'd, no. He'd no, also, you don't. <laughs> he'd also been previously implicated in a different murder case. <laughs> Great. In 1977, he'd given a handgun to a friend who used it to kill a romantic rival and then later helped destroy the murder weapon. And in the end, he avoided prosecution for that case by testifying for the prosecution. Sheesh. So then he Bill's did Bill's all tied up. Bill's all tied up. So then he did the same now by, like, you know, testifying to all this shit to avoid prosecution for putting a body in his freezer and melting down the murder weapon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He should probably quit while he's ahead. He should probably When's change his When's the last time stripes? you went above and beyond for a friend? <laughs> for an ex-girlfriend <laughs> from 30 years ago. Um, so he continued to cooperate with police giving information against Marjorie up until his death of lymphoma in 2004. And many people speculate that Rothstein only agreed to give the information he had because he knew his diagnosis and that he'd never survive long enough to go to prison anyway. That's fair. Right. Okay. On January 7th, 2005, Marjorie Deal Armstrong pled guilty to the third degree murder of her fiance, James Roden, but she cited her diagnosed mental illness as a mitigating factor, and she was sentenced to a minimum of seven and a maximum of 20 years in prison for that murder. Mm. That's not a lot. Back to the bomb plot. Oh, oh my God. right, that. I'm exhausted. Okay, let's keep going. Are I am you, getting so much coloring. Are done. you? <laughs> <laughs> it's taken me She's... all week to write this case. <laughs> I know. <sighs> I at first I was like, great, saving time. I get the fan pick case this week. Oh, even better, saving time. I can watch this documentary and write my notes. Slash. 27 hours in. <laughs> you should probably cut all of that. Nope. Okay. I love it. I do love the fan picker. <laughs> it's not your fault. Okay. Then it's a little bit your fault. So in late 2005, <laughs> <laughs> the brother-in-law of a TV repairman and ex-crack dealer named Kenneth Barnes, because we need another character, who was a friend of Marjorie's, they were fishing buddies, told investigators <laughs> that Barnes, the fishing buddy crack dealer, had detailed information about the collar bomb case. Under questioning, Ken Barnes revealed that Marjorie helped mastermind the collar bomb plot along with Bill Rothstein because she wanted to hire him, Ken Barnes, to murder her father in order to access what she believed would be her inheritance that she felt her wealthy father was frittering away on philanthropy. Mm-hmm, what mm-hmm, the fuck does this mm-hmm. have to do with the pizza guy? The well, bank. I'm assuming we'll get to it. Oh, the bank. The, okay. She needed money to hire a hit. Keep up. She I, needed you money. Are you fucking kidding me? Keep up. <laughs> she needed money to hire a hitman that was a crack <sighs> dealer. And she needed to rob a bank in an elaborate scavenger hunt in order to hire the hitman. Gotcha, gotcha. I don't know how I missed the All overlying, the overarching and goal of this. Her ex lover helped her do this, and in the process, her fiance died. Right, 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 right. Obviously. Right, right, right. <laughs> do you have a chart? There is a chart. I can't. Yes, Look at it Christ. if you so choose. I can't. Okay. Ken Barnes <laughs> told police <laughs> that one month before the robbery, Marjorie asked him if he knew how to build a pipe bomb. 
He did not, but Bill Rothstein apparently did because it's he also was a handy man. Googleable. Bill Rothstein needed money to get his siblings off of his back because he'd been living rent free in a property owned by their parents. But now the parents had passed away and the rest of the family wanted to sell it and split the money. And Bill told them that he listed the house for sale, but just didn't have any takers yet. But then it came to light that he actually listed this like kind of shitty house for more than two times its actual value. Mm -hmm. Mm. Because he didn't really want to sell it? Because he didn't want to sell it because he was living there rent free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why nobody was buying it. And Bill, and then I think the siblings found out about this and were like, okay, no, like sell it. We need this money. And so Bill needed money to buy them out if he wanted to stay in the house. Okay. Mm. The house Mm -hmm. with the body in the freezer. Gotcha. But the trio needed a fall guy. Enter Brian Wells. The mild-mannered pizza delivery guy had fallen in love with a sex worker that he often hired named Jessica Hoopsick. The Mm -hmm. sex worker was addicted to crack and knew the crack dealer, Ken Barnes. And in exchange for drugs, she agreed to enlist her regular client, Brian Wells, in the bank robbery to pay Ken Barnes to kill Marjorie's father. So pizza guy for sure Z's thought that this was just like a joke or like a non-serious. Yeah, he did not think it was a real bomb around his neck. James Roden was murdered because he was threatening to go to the cops with all the information. Bill Rothstein called in the Roden murder info in order to appear like he had nothing to hide and because he felt that one of his co-conspirators would eventually rat the rest of them out, it was only a matter of time and he wanted to get ahead of it. Uh Okay. Ken Barnes, the crack dealer, agreed to testify to all of this in exchange for a reduced sentence in the case. When confronted by Barnes' testimony, Marjorie claimed that she was not involved in the bomb plot, but that she, quote, knew about it. (laughs) Okay. Just like Bill didn't murder James Roden, Mm. but helped. Mm -hmm. He was just Mm -hmm. in his garage. Mm -hmm. And uh, that she had even supplied Bill Rothstein with the two kitchen timers that were in the bomb. Mm-hmm. Because she was a hoarder, so she just, like, had a bunch of spare parts lying around. Mm Mm-hmm. She also testified... She supplied Bill Rothstein with the 800 pounds of butter used in the bomb. (laughs) 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 And the several cat carcasses. (laughs) Oops, I found a cat skeleton. entirely made of tiny cat bones. Sad. (laughs) They are really small, though. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Seen it. I also, looking at the photos on the drive, I forgot how much I actually liked Bill Rothstein in that documentary. Like, Yeah. yeah, He was my favorite character, if you can call him a character, because he was a real person. But... He's kind of great. He's... He's kind of great. Intriguing for a murderer. He carries Um, it. So Marjorie also testified at trial, which was perhaps a curious tactic on the part of her attorney. And I think maybe they put her up there intentionally to be like, she's whacked. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, get a little sympathy defense because she just she just talks at people. She doesn't stop. She just goes. Yeah, it's pretty intense to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So the jury deliberated for just 11 hours before convicting Marjorie of armed bank robbery, conspiracy to commit armed bank robbery, and using a destructive device in a crime of violence. The deceased Bill Rothstein was an unindicted co-conspirator in the case, and Kenneth Barnes, who did the plea bargain, had already been convicted, well, had already, like, pled guilty and got a reduced sentence. He had already plea bargained. Mm Mm-hmm. Pleaded, did it. Um, She was not convicted of murdering Brian Wells, 
who investigators believed was involved to a limited extent with the planning, um, but probably did not realize the bomb was real until just moments before his violent death when it began bucking, ticking. God, I can't even. That video is so fucking disturbing. Mm -hmm. It's real bad. You can see when he starts to tense up and freak out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. On February 28th, 2011, Marjorie was sentenced to life plus 30 years imprisonment. She served less than six years of this sentence, however, before dying of breast cancer in April 2017. So basically a band of eccentric, murderous misfits cooked Mm -hmm. up a really overwrought bank robbery Mm -hmm. slash murder for hire plot. And then two guys got killed in the process. Yep, and everyone else just died in prison. Uh, or of cancer. And then there's yeah. another person in this that I, like, couldn't even fit into Great. my notes. But Great. Rothstein had a roommate who was a rapist who was on the run. Great. Oh, my God! I can't. Whatever. There's <laughs> another per. I didn't know where to put it. So it's... Watch the Netflix. Watch the <laughs> we Netflix. Can't, we can't do it anymore. I can't We're already at, like, a two-hour run time. I'm done. So that's Ugh. the case. Great. Now a word from our... F- sponsor <laughs> article makes beautiful well-made furniture with scandinavian simplicity and it's all beautifully designed super modern furniture it's gorgeous uh an article is also an online only furniture company which means they eliminate the layers of traditional retail so they're getting rid of the middlemen people say goodbye to middlemen uh bye bye <laughs> <laughs> Article is able to keep prices low and their quality high. So they don't have showrooms. There's no salespeople. And that means savings for you. I ordered Ah, the Sven Charm Tan Leather Chair. Hello. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Oh, my God. I'm so excited for my bed to come. Article Mm. is serious about shipping. So, again, I ordered a bed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And no matter how many items, every order is shipped at a flat rate of $49. And if you need some help getting your new furniture set up, they have options for in-room delivery and assembly assistance. Amanda can attest. Sure can. And their in-stock items can be expected in two weeks or less. They put their Mm -hmm. customers First, there is a Mm -hmm. 30-day return policy. That is very generous. And they have the best customer service in the biz. Seriously, Mm -hmm. all of the above is true. Starting with the no showrooms, no salespeople, I once bought a couch at like a large-scale furniture store, and it was a harrowing experience. (laughs) And they didn't even offer free delivery or even affordable delivery with that item, so I had to spend an arm and a leg to either get it delivered or do what I did, which is grab one of my girlfriends in a truck too small and slowly inch your way down mm-hmm. 35W with a sectional <laughs> falling out of the back of the truck. And then so maybe don't do that. While you're yeah. carrying it up a staircase. Uh, it was the worst. So article <laughs> is now pretty much the only way I want to get furniture. Like Lucy said, it does come within two weeks or less if it's in stock. I ordered my mod uh, armchair in like this beautiful chartreuse green and that item was in stock and I seriously had it within about eight days, mm-hmm. which I was not expecting. It happened so fast. And then the people who coordinate the delivery, it mm-hmm. will be likely di- a different company in whatever state that you're ordering from. But the companies that Article works with are amazing. They're incredible. So they contacted me ahead of time to schedule a time that was convenient for me. Mm-hmm. I locked into this time. They made it there on time in an epic snowstorm. Mm-hmm. They brought everything into my apartment and then they offered to help me set up this chair, which like literally was screwing on four legs, but they were very much like, we can do this for you if you want to show us where you want it to be set up and where you want us to put it. I just sat back, watched, and let all of this unfold before my eyes. It was unbelievable. And I love my chair. I sit in it constantly. It's incredible. <laughs> so... Article is offering our listeners $50 off their first purchase of $100 or more. Are you kidding me? This is the mm-hmm. deal of the century. So to claim that, visit article.com slash gals, and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. And that's article.com slash gals to get $50, 50, 50 
off your first purchase of $100 or more. It's not hard to spend $100. You're going to want everything on this website. It's amazing. Yep. yep. Do Treat it. your house. Treat your decor. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. So HelloFresh makes conquering the kitchen a reality with deliciously simple recipes. I need simple people. I am not a natural chef. I <laughs> know. <Nope. laughs> HelloFresh does all the meal planning, shopping, and prepping so you can focus on a healthier you and a happier family and meeting all your health goals. And you can get seasonal simple recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door every week. It couldn't be any simpler. I love it. Like Kenyon said, not a natural chef, but (laughs) HelloFresh has made cooking enjoyable and easy. Again, those fresh pre-measured ingredients and easy to follow, typically six step pictured recipe cards, pictures. It is Mm -hmm. showing you exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is all delivered to your door each week in a special insulated box. So everything stays fresh and cold. You can spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping, which I absolutely abhor. I hate going Mm -hmm. to the grocery store. So you can get that time back to do more of what you love, like watching shows on Netflix. (laughs) All meals come together in about 30 minutes maximum, so it couldn't be more convenient. It calls for typically less than two pots and pans, so you don't need to have like an expertly tricked out kitchen to carry out any of these recipes. And they require minimal cleanup. It's usually like Mm -hmm. wipe down your counter, rinse off your cutting board, you Gucci. Crazy. Yeah, you can make family dinners fuss-free with HelloFresh's picky eater, kid-tested, and approved family plan recipes. Seriously, I, I could eat an entire start family plan. That. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I need to. I need to go up from my like two recipes a week to the full-blown family. Plan. <laughs> I love it. Well, lucky for Amanda, there are three plans to choose from. They've got that family plan recipe, Amanda's plan. Mm -hmm. Um, My future. Yep. (laughs) They also have classic and veggie. I get the veggie plan just because it teaches me how to, you know, use vegetables in different ways. And it's, you know, I just I just like it. It allows me to be a little more creative. Mm -hmm. And the other day I made the heirloom tomato flatbreads. Wow. Wow. It honestly hands on was like mm, under 10 minutes through the oven. And then I was just eating the most Mm -hmm. delicious flatbreads. And I felt so proud of myself. I felt so healthy. Mm -hmm. I didn't even mess it up. No. It's amazing. (laughs) So good. It was incredible. For $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com forward slash gals80. That's G A L S 80. And enter the promo code gals80. So again, for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com forward slash gals80. G A L S 80. And enter that promo code gals80. It's like receiving eight meals free. $80 mm. off your first month. Unreal. It's a steal. It's a steal. Treat your meals. Treat it. Lola is a female-founded company offering a line of organic cotton tampons, pads, liners, and all-natural cleansing wipes. They are amazing. Something I learned after getting on board with Lola is that the FDA does not require brands to disclose a comprehensive list of ingredients in Mm. their feminine care products. So So most of them just don't. You don't know what you're shoving up there. And I (laughs) take umbrage with that. Lola, however. (laughs) Yeah, you know what? I want to know what's going inside me. Yeah. Um, Lola offers complete transparency about the ingredients found in their tampons, pads, liners, and wipes. It's amazing. You know exactly what this stuff is. It's names you can pronounce. It's not nearly as scary. And Lola makes your month a little bit easier because their subscription is fully customizable so you can choose your mix of products, mix of absorbency, number of boxes, frequency of delivery. This is huge for me as someone who's on the next one on arm implant. My period's unpredictable and brief. I don't need a million tampons. I can just customize what I get. This subscription Mm -hmm. is super flexible. You can change, you can skip, you can cancel your subscription at any time. And yeah, it's infallible. It's amazing. What do you have to lose? What else is so great about Lola Kenyon? Uh, Their cleansing wipes. 
Do I I have ranted about these before, but they're seriously (laughs) amazing. Uh, They are safe for use anywhere on the body. Use your imagination. Mm -hmm. Uh, They are behind your knees. (laughs) (laughs) Side boob. Um, Yeah. They are the first biodegradable, all natural wipe of their kind, and they are perfect for a midday or mid flight. In my mm-hmm. case, often refresh. Uh, they are individually packaged and perfect for on the go, and they are gynecologist approved and hypoallergenic. These are amazing. I keep them in my gym bag. I keep them mm-hmm. in my purse. I keep them mm-hmm. in my carry on. I am obsessed with these wipes. People. They are so perfect for that, like end of your period. Mm-hmm. You can get away with either just a little panty liner or mm-hmm. like not much protection at all, but mm-hmm. things are still a little colorful mm-hmm. down there. But you're super sick of tampons time. at that point. Yes. I love these wipes for that like last unpredictable day yes. of the flow. Mm-hmm. The wipes are so good. I mm-hmm. love them. Mm-hmm. So for 40% off all subscriptions, visit mylola.com and enter the promo code GALS40 when you subscribe. So again, that is 40% off all subscriptions. Go to mylola.com, M-Y-L-O-L-A.com. And enter the promo code GALS40, G-A-L-S, for zero when you subscribe. Treat yo region. Treat mm. yo time of the month. Okay. Are we ready for my case? Yeah. I don't know if I'm fully recovered yet. It's so easy to follow, y'all. Like, <laughs> Thank, uh, yeah, this is me just feeding you cookies. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Okay, so I stumbled upon this and... This is from a Vice article uh, out of the Netherlands from a handful of years ago. And (laughs) obviously, I know, I think it's from like 2014. Um, Obviously, the article's great, but because of the interview with this woman is why I chose this, because she's amazing. So this is about 90-year-old Freddie Overstegen who is one of the few women who were active in the Dutch resistance during World War II. Yes, please. Along with her sister, Truus Overstegen, and another young woman, Hanny Shaft. Oh, my God. Um, Hanny, Truus, and Freddie. And Freddie, I know. Hanny was killed just before the end of the war, so she did not survive World War II. Um, But Freddie and Truus did. When Freddie was 14 years old and her sister Truce 16 years old, a gentleman visited her family home to ask their mother if she would allow her daughters to join the resistance. Mm. No one would suspect two young girls of being resistance fighters, he argued, and he was right. Good point. The o- uh, hmm? Good point. Yep. Like Lucy in my brief smuggling career, who would suspect <laughs> us? <laughs> I mean, you were caught. Law enforcement just wasn't we available away. enough they had to deal with to do. you. <laughs> yeah, they were just busy. It's fine. It's Again, fine. saving I that main- for a different episode. I maintain that that was a very effective smuggling move, although we <laughs> did get our shit confiscated. So Totally effective, not actually getting any of it into the state. <laughs> it's fine. We weren't charged with an international felony. It's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway... The Overseekin sisters would flirt with Nazi collaborators under false pretenses and then lead them into the woods where instead of a makeout session, the men would be greeted with a bullet. At 14? 14 and 16 years old. Oh my God. I would be all the fuck about that. Yeah. This sounds like an erotica novel. I was already a horrible tease at that age. So this would have been great. Yeah. Imagine using that we to kill been Nazis. So good. We've been so good at it. <laughs> Caught teasing your way to winning World War II. Yeah, hundred percent. Hanny Shaft went uh, went on to become world famous. She's the one who did not survive the war. A feature film was made about quote the girl with the red hair, and she was reburied. So she had originally been buried somewhere else, and then moved to like a military mm. uh, cemetery. Cemetery. Um, with honors in the presence of Queen Wilhelmina and Prince Bernard of the Le- Netherlands. Um, and over 15 cities in the Netherlands have streets named after her. Nice. Which is so cool. Truce Overstegen made a name for herself after the war as a public speaker at war mo- memorial services and was also an artist. I think she was a painter. 
Um, but the person who is in this interview, her little sister, Freddie, never got that much recognition for her participation in the resistance until Dutch filmmaker Thies Zeman mm. decided to make her and her sister the subject of a TV documentary called Two Sisters in the Resistance, called Two Girls, One Cup. <laughs> um, so this <laughs> is Hattie, the... One shaft. <laughs> Two Hatties, one. Resistance. <laughs> Res- the resistance story. I'm sorry, you're so a hero. So I am going to read through this incredible interview with Freddie. Yes. Um, okay. I understand we don't have a lot of time for the interview. This is the person from Vice starting it off. Freddie, that's right. I'm meeting some people to play Scrabble at too. I do that <laughs> twice a week. You can't let people down if you've agreed to join. <laughs> Values. Yes. The fucking principles this woman has. Yep. He asks, do you win often? She replies, no comment. (laughs) Oh, my God. What is it like for you to remember the war on Remembrance Day? So he was interviewing her on, like, Mm -hmm. May 4th is Remembrance Day in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he was interviewing her on this particular day. How do you wake up on a day like today? I do feel a bit of dread. And it's even worse today because I have to go to the dentist this afternoon. (laughs) I'm not looking forward to that. (laughs) I love her so much. I love um, her so deeply. Are you going somewhere for the Remembrance Day ceremony? Yeah, the dentist. Yes. Well, obviously, after, before the dentist. Did I yes. stutter? Did, uh, didn't you fucking hear me? Because anyway, I need to know to tell Do you want to go to the woods? <laughs> eh. At this point, she's in her 90s. I don't think she's seducing anyone into the woods at this point. She's fucking over it. Anyway. I wonder if she wore red. I wonder if she sucked anyway. their toes. <laughs> anyway, she responded, yes, to Ijmoiden, which I did have to write myself a pronunciation guide because this is spelled Crazy. Netherlandy. Netherlandy. Um, people lay wreaths there, including one in my name, and I get to sit in the front row amid all the notables. Aww. Good day. Good day. Mm-hmm. He asks, what do you think, dur- think about during the two minutes of silence? She replies, nothing. I just shut off my thoughts completely, and then I think about the fact that a lot of people have fallen. I remember how people were taken from their homes. The Germans were banging on doors with the butts of their rifles that made so much noise. You'd hear it in the entire neighborhood and they would always yell. It was very frightening. Which paper is this interview for, by the way? (laughs) That's part of her interview? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Just keep listening. (laughs) He responds, it's for Vice, an online magazine. I see you have a computer, so... She responds, yes, but it doesn't get internet. My children think it's best if I don't go on the internet. (laughs) (laughs) Our kids have a word processor that's it, like Oregon Trail. Creed thoughts. (laughs) Creed thoughts. Um, Dot, dot. He responds, I'll make sure you get to read it. Now, back to a time before the internet. You were 14 when you and your sister Truce, who was 16 at the time, were asked to fight in the resistance. Did your mother agree right away? Freddie says, a man wearing a hat came to the door and asked my mother if he could ask us. And he did. So, yes, she was okay with it. A man wearing a hat. (laughs) This is maybe my favorite part of the interview. Uh, He asks, where was your father? She says, my mother had divorced him, which was pretty unusual for that time. She was just fed up one day. We lived on a large ship in Harlem, but my father never made any money and didn't pay anything for the barge. But it wasn't an ugly divorce or anything. She sang, he sang a French farewell song for the bow of the ship when we left. He loved us, but I didn't see him that often anymore after that. He sailed away singing a French farewell song. It was different times. Different times. He responds, and the three of you went to live somewhere else? She says, yes, in a flat where we slept on straw mattresses. My mother had made those herself. I come from a very original family. We didn't have much, but my mother always figured something out, and we were always singing. A bit later, we got a baby brother from a different father. We got a baby brother from a different father. Their mom was pulling zero punches. No, and this family was badass, so it continues on. On, uh, we were all the vice interviewer singing. says, were you hiding any people in your house as well? And she responds, yes, definitely. <laughs> Before the war started in the Netherlands, when we were still living on the boat, we had some people from Lithuania, Lithuania hidden in the hold of the ship. And during the war, we had a Jewish couple living with us, which is why my sister and I knew a lot about what was going on. Mm. But they were supposed to be our enemy because they were capitalists and we were communists. Oh, my God. What? But obviously they were not en- enemies. I don't know. That's what she said. 
So I think but. this family identified as communists because the Netherlands I mean, I don't know. weren't communists. Okay, I, whatever. I don't know. Um, Vice, when you were asked to join the resistance, did you have any idea that what that would entail? She says, no, I thought we would be starting a kind of secret army. The man that came to our door said that we would get military training and they did teach us a thing or two. Someone taught us to shoot and we learned to march in the woods. Yeah, marching was really helpful for these two girls. I'm sure they marched a lot. Well, like discipline. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But whatever. There were about seven of us. Then then Hanny wasn't part of the group yet. And we were the only girls in this little resistance. Much later, a Nazi big shot was killed in those same woods, and he was buried out there as well. But Truce and I weren't allowed to be there when that happened. They felt like that wasn't something girls should see. <laughs> I they would have should just snuck do into the that killing. Shit. I know, right? <laughs> your Vice, time what is was your too role valuable. in that mission? <laughs> uh, he asked, What was your role in that mission? And she responds, I didn't shoot him, one of the men did. I had to keep an eye on my sister and keep a lookout from a vantage point in the woods to see if no one was coming. Truce had met him in an expensive bar, seduced him, and then took him for a walk in the woods. Mm -hmm. She was like, want to go for a stroll? And of course he wanted to. Then they ran into someone, which was made to seem like a coincidence, but he was one of ours. And that friend said to Truce, girl, you know you're not supposed to be here. They Mm -hmm. apologized, turned around and walked away, and then shots were fired. So the guy was shot in the back. Mm. So that man never knew what hit him. They had already dug the hole, but we weren't allowed to be there for that part. <laughs> well, true. She has a lot there. of regrets. She was yeah. there for the shooting. She could have gotten shot well, in the back. Fuck. Yeah, no, they were there for the shooting. It's. I think it's funny that she pointed out they weren't allowed to be there for when they preemptively Digging dug the his hole. grave. <laughs> Great. Fine. Yeah, like I they're trying to protect there. their virtue while they're shooting someone right next to these 15, 16 year old girls. God. They're I not going to shoot just... them, though. Like, they are no, valuable. I know, but. Yeah, but that's still a pretty fucking traumatizing thing to be yeah. luring men into the woods, even Nazis. Like as I know, a fifteen-year-old, if you were, if you were of the mindset that the Nazis were bad people and they were going to hurt your family and your community, then like I think yeah, that would like lower the that's level not the of point. trauma. The point is that it's funny that they didn't want them to be there for the digging of a grave, right. but they were fine with shooting someone right next to them. I think that's it's funny, funny that she's pissed that they weren't there for the <laughs> digging of the grave. Yeah. Like, I mean, she's holding rightfully a grudge. So. She's there for all the crazy stuff. Um, Vice says, and you were okay with that? But she says, yes, I didn't want to see that. They later told us that they had taken off all his clothes so you couldn't tell who he was. I think he might still be there. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Now that I think about it, he's in a freezer in my garage. But my I had friend's to do with garage, it. but they had nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, Vice, you were two years younger than your sister. Was she the brave one of the two of you? Okay, this is my other absolute favorite part of the interview (laughs) freddie when we were little she'd always say this is my beautiful sister and that was true she was an unsightly child (laughs) but she was the brave one oh my god literally hired to to seduce (laughs) seduce. and effectively but she she was was very good at yeah, she was an unsightly child, she but she was the brave one, and she was very good at public speaking. She did a lot of that after the war as well. She always knew her speech by heart. She never needed any notes, but that has changed now. Um, this is Vice. You did mention that she is suffering from dementia. Did the two of you used to talk about the war a lot? Freddie says, yes, always. We never had to say, remember when, because it was always at the top of our minds. Mm. Uh, Vice. Truce worked through her war trauma partly... With the art that she made, how did you cope? <laughs> Freddie says, by getting married and having babies. <laughs> and I often babysat Truce's children as well because she was very busy. She'd visit Hanny a lot, the mother, uh, the mother of Hanny Shaft. So Hanny was a Hanny Jr. Mm-hmm. I have always been a little jealous of her because she got so much attention after the war. But then I just think, I was in the resistance as well. You know what I'm going to do now? Mm-hmm. Vice says, what? And she says, make a sandwich and have a cup of tea. I've been up since six. (laughs) (laughs) And that is my seduced to kill (laughs) case. And there are pictures of Freddie on the drive, both present and from when she was in the resistance, a little kiddo. Oh my God. She's so fucking cute. She's She's holding candies. 
Oh, yeah. she is cute. Oh, no. I love her so much. Nice. Good job. I'm going to make a sandwich and a cup of tea. I've been up since six. That is I the know. biggest headband ever. Her teddy bear. It's huge. You guys, when I'm that old, I don't want a fucking teddy bear, okay? Well, too bad. Just you're to my six. future great grandchildren, I just don't want stuffed animals. Don't. She does oh, appear Lord. to be holding a container of sour hairy bows, which I am all mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So please send me all of those. Way Love to it. go, Freddie. She's so cute. She <sighs> earned all of those gummies, let me tell you. Nice work. I love her. Good job. I know. I just really wanted to do something lighthearted. Yeah. Killing Nazis. Not, yeah. It's lighthearted as it gets. <laughs> yep. On this show, anyway. <laughs> All right. Special, Cheered me right up. Special <laughs> thanks this week. Let's do it. Let's do it. Special thanks to Ashling Marr, who very nearly drew me into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> to drove you, you into, into the woods. <laughs> um, no, this was a really great topic and a very interesting case. So thank you so much. Nice job, Ashling. Um, also, thank you to Jennifer Pew. <laughs> Pew, you don't reek <laughs> is our don't only advice. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for your five dollar a month donation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Lisa Jensen. Put out a lease on you, Lisa Jensen. <laughs> nailed it, Lisa Jensen's. <laughs> Fucking nailed it. What the oh, fuck? Jensen, hardly know her. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Shout, Our old fallback. Shout out to Isabel. No last name. Thank you for your $5 a month. You're a bell, Isabel. I got nothing. I'm sorry. That yeah. Was yeah. Uh, thank you, Mallory Williams. I want to fill a gallery with pictures of your face, Mallory. <laughs> thank you so much for your donation. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you also to Ruby O'Strike. Mm-hmm. And strike me dead if I pronounced your name wrong, I but actually don't because I name definitely Ruby. did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you so cute. much, Ruby. You are so a gem. Bless you. Thank you to Chloe Jessen. I say yes to you. Thank you oh. for your $5 a month. Okay. Um... Thank you <laughs> to Alexandra Kurtstick. <laughs> one and I vowel appreciate in that name. How many vowels there is one singular vowel. is in your last name? I'm curtsying <laughs> to you. Okay, thank you also to Lori Cubis. You are the incubus. Pubis, the mons pubis. <laughs> I purposely <laughs> didn't go there well i purposely did go was there. gonna say you are the incubus to my 2002 uh playlist you You're right. are so. a cubist piece of art oh my god not uh, in an pubis. moving way. on okay thanks Lori. <laughs> bye <laughs> shout out to joanna bailey bailey Hardly know Lee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I barely know you. Joanna, listen to that. Oh, okay. God. Okay. All right. Um, I am thrilled <laughs> to be reading this next one. <laughs> Special thanks to Delicious Donkey Kong. <laughs> I have, I'm hope, I want to see your birth certificate because I'm hoping this is your given name. Mm-hmm. Your, your, Biblical Fucking name. delicious. There's literally nothing else to say about your name. Uh, thank you so much, delicious. We love you. Ooh, I think I got you beat on this next one. Mm. Thank you to Trashy Divorces Podcast. I look forward to being a subject one day. <laughs> We're going to keep your info on hand. Yeah. On file. I've it's in my role to that. That sounds awesome. Trashy yeah. Divorces Podcast. Thousand percent, I'm with you. Thank you so much for bringing this content into the world. Here We've been waiting for it. Tiffany Crawford, you are a precious gem in a baby teal box. 
Tiffany Amber Thiessen, Cindy Crawford. <laughs> Love it. Thank you to Samantha Decker. I want to peck her with consent <laughs> right on the cheek. Right on your toes. Amazing oh, for her amazing donation. Can't wait toes. to lick your toes. No. <laughs> Paying special attention to in between ew. the toes oh. using ew, edible ew, 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 oils. Ew, 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 ew. <laughs> okay, moving on. Emily Birchfield. Like Butterfield. Butterfield. Oh, I'm going to try my hand A at the Butterfield accent. Yes, try it. Emily Butterfield Birchfield. I'm this terrible at this. This flower is wilted. <laughs> I, I do now, declare. I now pronounce you guilty of being extremely generous with your $5 <laughs> a month. <laughs> I sentence like- you to laugh. <laughs> to laugh as our esteemed <laughs> colleague. <laughs> All right. Maggie Grussing. I want to get grussied up and hang with you, Maggie Grussing. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Pouring more wine. <laughs> Thank you, Elise Freeman. I'm assuming no relation to Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> but I will drive your Miss Daisy any day of the week. Oh, Elise, my. Ooh. <laughs> I still have to see the Green Book. Don't love that it was entirely produced by white men, but you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on. In case you were unawares, you can increase your pledge. Yeah. Oh, we love the time. lead of McKenna B, who increased their pledge from one to five dollars a month. McKenna. Cotty, 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 Cotty. Cotty, McKenna, McKenna, you are an inspiration. Mm-hmm. Thank you so As much. As is Allison Green. You make us green with envy with all the mm-hmm. green you are donating to this show. Thank you, Allison. Mm-hmm. And also thank you for your increase, Kristen Bumgardner. Guard, Guard your my bum. bum. <laughs> <May> these. <laughs> Flaming hot Cheeto ass morels no. flourish under your tutelage, that, Kristen Bumgardner. That imagery haunts yep. me. Has haunts ruined morels. I for love you. it. Carolyn we, Girk did a drawing of my ass morels, yeah. and it's like fucking amazing. Fucking I Carolyn, love it so why much. did you do this? This <laughs> she's will a stick queen. with me for the rest of my life. No, I love her so much, and she's very talented. It. But honestly, but <laughs> but honestly, Bum Gardner. Right. Where yep, are we at? Kicking off it. the ten dollars a month. This tier <laughs> will get you a free fucking patriarchy flexible wine glass. Tiffany Peterson, so you're gonna get one, and you're gonna get one, and you're gonna get one, but actually and you only get, get one. a car, and you get a car. Just kidding, we are not giving cars to anybody. Mm-mm. Tiffany, I wish that I could give you more than one wine glass, but I can't. But thank you so much for your ten dollars a month. We appreciate. Mm-hmm. And thank you to Heather M. Snedden. Uh, it would be Armageddon if you were to stop donating. <laughs> Oh, my God. Incredible. (laughs) Megan Ann Rogers. Mrs. Rogers. Mm -hmm. Like Mr. Rogers. Mm. And I'm tired. Thank you for your $10 a month donation. And we love you. We're almost there. We're so close. Big thank you to Shantiana. Ooh, Ooh. that's a cool name. Shantiana. Mm, I, Shantiana. I shan't keep trying to pronounce your name. <laughs> I love your name so much, I'm going to Shantiana my pants. I love it. <laughs> yes. Thank you for all the support. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my turn again already. Brittany winner. I know. Oh, thank God. I feel like a winner because I got your name. Thank you, Brittany. Yep. Yep. Yup, and thank you to Lindsay Mayer, who is kicking off our Trash Queen tier at $15 a month. Lindsay, you may or may not know this, <laughs> <laughs> but we really appreciate you. That was a good one. Uh, All right. You know, that's jokes. So I just, I don't know where it comes from. It's just natural, you know. A mayor, I can. A mayor, I can. 
Uh, made in the USA. S-A. <laughs> By American. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Big thank you to Krishna Prabhu Sundaran for Nailed your $15 it. a month donation. You are our trash king or queen or neither or both. So Woo. Love it. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, <laughs> Krishna. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, shout out to Abigail Ross, also in the trash queen category. Uh, Gail Force Axel wins. Ross could not keep me from you, Abigail. Abigail Force wins. <laughs> You're really Rossum. <laughs> yeah, you are. Ross and Ross. Have you tried Ross these? <laughs> um, Ross. Bex Wallace. <laughs> Bex the halls with your donation. <laughs> Fa la 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 la. Thank you for increasing from five dollars to fifteen dollars a month. Good bless. Good back to you. Oh my God. And Alana Shear gave a $10 <gasps> once off donation. If you mm. are like all of Amanda's ex boyfriends and cannot commit, you can visit our <laughs> online store and make a one time donation. So, Alana, Correct. you are Alana sheerly amazing. From what's it mm-hmm. called? Mm hmm. Broad City. My God. Broad, you blew City. Broad City. Spelled differently. It's fine. Okay. All right. Sheer. But holy shit, that would be amazing. We're, sh- we're sh- for sheerly done with our special thanks this week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thanks Thank for you. listening, everybody. Talk to Thank you next you. week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kali Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Editing by Jonathan Camp. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have questions, answers, or recommendations to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your podcasts. Most importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It really is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support and get a shout out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! When you download the Kroger app, you have easy access to savings every day. Get the most out of weekly sales and receive personalized coupons to save on your favorite items, all while earning one fuel point for every dollar spent. Kroger makes it easy to save while you shop, whether it's in-store or online, so you get the most value out of every trip, every time. Download the Kroger app now to save big on your next purchase. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Must have a digital account to redeem offers. Restrictions may apply. See site for details.